doing a podcast on book fair. I know. Do you want to start yours? Uh, no, I will go off on a rant because I'm going to talk about the Girl Scouts. I'm surprised you didn't say Give anything. A hundred dollars at a book fair is ridiculous. Well, I mean, it just, I don't want to even go down that because <laughs> I'll get all pissed off. Yay Networks. Hey guys, episode 36. It's freezing today in Denver. I, I had to pull out my sweater. Sweater jam. Sweater jams. Look at, I'm even dressed up too. Yeah, and Jeff doesn't have on white shoes today. We got the black podcast I'm, shoes. I'm all black. If you guys are just listening, I'm dressed in all black today. That means we're probably going out to dinner. If Jeff's like in all black, that means he's ready to look nice and we're going out to dinner somewhere. No, you know what it is? On Fridays at work, I just wear all black, like a black shirt with a black sports coat. Did you ever notice that? No. Yeah, because you pay very, <laughs> very attention to the show a lot. I don't know, <laughs> because, uh, right, we're already starting off crazy, but when I go, when I have to dress up for work, right? I don't, I just wear like jeans and I put a suit jacket and button up shirt underneath there. I don't even wear a tie, I try to keep it casual. Al usually wears a tie, uh, our other co-host. And I want to just wear a white shirt with a sports coat every day. That's all I want. Mm -hmm. But the camera, the way the cameras are, it, it like, I, I don't know. This is like technical, but like it zooms in on the white and it kind of washes, you washes out. out your face a little bit. So unless you have super high def cameras, like if you see on television, people wearing white, obviously those cameras are all you know, up to date and there's someone actually controlling it behind there in case it washes you out. They could turn a little knob and like, That's you know, crazy. focus it back up. I didn't know that. Yeah. We're not that kind of production, you know? So I have to wear a colored shirt, but on Fridays I just wear black on black and uh, it gives me one less thing to worry about. So I was wearing this black to work. So I just decided I'll just pop on the podcast since people make fun of my shoes all the time. That's like this. Is that why big brother you can't wear white? Yes, exactly. Because yeah. it washes, it, but it, it doesn't, it, it do does something, something else. It does something to like the background and stuff. I don't know exactly. I'm, I'm kind of just talking out of my ass because I asked like our camera guys and our producers and stuff. And it does something like to the set, like the way it looks. And it's all, it's super technical. Like Bert, our EP loves that stuff. And he like, he's like, the light's not bouncing off your face, right? When you adjust your chair. I'm like, what? I don't even understand all that stuff, but all of it. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would, that was a long answer for why I'm wearing One black. thing that I remember when I would see people that if they were hosting and I would see them in person, like from TV, and then you see them in person, their makeup, like their face always looks so much darker. The makeup, like oh, their yeah, yeah. foundation always looks a lot darker. Like you can really see the makeup. I don't. It's very interesting. It's something I've noticed. Like in L.A., oh, if we've gone. I and thought I've you meant like new, the news people next door to us, or L.A. Yeah, yeah, or L.A. Just people on TV. Their makeup always looks a little bit darker than it does on TV. Oh yeah, yeah. It's but weird. Don't you how feel things... like you have to do that? Do you have you have makeup I on have right make, now? I just left it on from work. I'm ready to go. It looks good. That maybe that's why your face always looks better than mine. Maybe. Yeah, you're trying to be better. <laughs> I'm I got like five be pimples right now. Do you feel face. like as the week goes on, this is a weird question, because it's Friday and I got on like new socks and like nice underwear. Mm -hmm. Do you feel? <laughs> do you feel like as the week goes on, you put on better stuff? Because like Monday, you're like, oh. whatever, I'll just wear some old stuff, you know. And then as it goes on, you're like, it's Thursday. This shirt's a little nicer. I'll put I this on. I think it's because it's getting towards the end of the week, and you're more excited because you're like, oh, the weekend's coming. Everybody kind of is out more. It's just more fun. Yeah, Mondays, I'm the same way. Mondays, right? I look horrible on Mondays. I don't know if that makes any sense. Anyways, we got off to a random start. Lawson was sick for two gears days. A little bit? Yeah, we're going to switch it a little bit. Lawson was sick for two days. His teacher had texted me saying he threw up in... Um, in class and to come get him. And uh, I felt so bad. He had told me, he said, mom, I'm not feeling well. And my stomach hurts. And I was like, you don't have fever. You look fine. I thought he was just trying to stay home so he could play video games. And I made him go to school. And I've done that to Layton too, where Layton said he didn't feel good. I made him go. And then the times when I've let them stay home, they, nothing was wrong with them, you know? And then I felt really bad. Yeah, but... I know what you mean, because I thought they were faking, too. 
I'm yeah. like, that's because you just stayed up late, man. You got to go. Yeah. You know, and, but they get off, kids these days, we've talked about this too in the past. They get off for everything. So I'm like, you're not missing school. You're going. And then they're like, he threw up. I'm like, oh man, I feel bad. I know. I felt the same way, but it's going around like in the school. And I thought it was very interesting today at a swing by the school and the lady at the front desk, you would think because there's so many kids that they wouldn't know who your kid is. And even the front desk lady goes, how's Lawson feeling? Like she knew he was out. I know there's people that do attendance, but like just the fact that they, how's Lawson doing? You're like, wow, you, you guys pay attention. Yeah. I just love nice. his, I just love his school. The little extra effort. Yeah. Like the little things. That's what I love. And then, you know, I thought when someone in the house gets a stomach bug, Ooh. you all go down. And I thought for sure by today, one of us was going down because I was hoping it would be Jeff. <laughs> not Why me. would you say that? Because I've had this like sinus thing and I wanted you to take it for the team. Take one for the team. So I was hoping you would get it and not me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean that in a loving hate, way. Man, there is like, I don't know. I don't know how to, if we're ranking sicknesses, but the stomach bug oh. is like at the top. Just... Oh, uh, just the vomit, just all of that. Like Lawson was crying, was like, make it stop. And then it just breaks your heart because. Oh, you're... I know. Then I was like, man, I wish I could take it away, buddy. And but I when can't... you're like, when it's coming out of both sides. Oh, that's what it was doing. I know. Oh my God. It's it, the worst. And he would have the it's trash the can. But I was cheering him on. Like it was again. I was like, you got this Lawson. Keep going. And I was like trying to make him feel better while I'm rubbing his back and. Because I didn't want him to be scared or to be upset, you know, because it champ. was scary. He did. He took it like a chance. Because I don't take sickness well. No, you I'm don't. I'm a baby. No. It's like, I remember <laughs> being breastfeeding, throwing up, holding Leighton, taking care of Lawson, and I just had to deal with it. And then when dads are sick, it's like, oh, I'm going in the room. I'm going to shut the door and you don't do anything. It's just wow. how it goes. You didn't have to crank it up a notch, breastfeeding and babies. I did. I, re I will never remember that. I called my mom crying and I was, uh, I was really upset. I was like, I got fever and chills and I'm holding a baby and throwing up and it's hard. It was tough times. It's hard. It was tough times. I fight it to the last minute. You know, I'm like, oh my, please don't throw up. Please don't. And then it goes on for hours. And then finally you're just like, Oh my God. And then you get in like all oh, that feeling in your chest and you're like, man, I kind of feel better that I did that. And then all of a sudden it slowly starts coming back. It's the worst. It's really bad. I don't know what we're talking about, but I I'm know. glad he's feeling better. Nobody else got it, which was super surprising, mm. but it's just, I, I mean, if one kid like catches that in school, it just goes around that. But I'm glad we did. I was taking vitamins all week. I was taking, you know, Vitamin C, vitamin D, just, I was like trying to stay away a little bit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and then switching gears to this, because a lot of you asked, and I said I would explain. I did a telehealth with a uh, doctor and about my weight, and um, she's requesting blood work. I have to go to like a lab corp, get blood work done, and then she'll be able to tell but in the meantime, she put me on trizepatide. Um, I think that's strictly for weight loss. I know a lot of people who do um, Ozempic or Manjaro, things like that. People don't want other people to know, but I think it's pretty obvious whenever you're like super skinny and then so and then everybody like celebrities, you see them and I'm like, oh, that celebrity is so skinny. And then she's like, oh, I'm just working out. And you're like, no, you're not. You're totally doing the shots. So well, I don't understand. We we talk about this on our show a lot, but why, I don't understand the stigma behind that. If you're like, I think the backlash, I think people what? look why? down on it. I don't know. I think some people well, some people are private. Totally get that. And then some people are maybe just embarrassed to say it or maybe scared to say it because then it other people will talk because then it's like, oh, well, she should just got skinny because she's taken Manjaro. So what? I don't care. I don't, but I'm just, I don't deal. understand the, I don't understand the stigma behind it. It's like getting a personal trainer because you want to work out. It just gives you a little kick in the ass. 
You know, that's why not, I'm doing it. I need a life, kick in the ass. It can't be a lifelong change. You can't be on that for the rest of your no. life. But it's good to jumpstart your body, especially as you get older, your uh, metabolism slows down a little bit, whatever you need. And then once you start seeing a little bit of results, you naturally start being like, well, I'm not going to eat that or I'm not going to drink tonight because I'm feeling good. It's like, I think the natural process takes over a little bit. And I don't understand the stigma of people are like, well, you better just tell me why you or did or didn't. And some people are like, all right, fine. I did. Like, I think Oprah just came out and she's like, yeah. fine. I did. You know, it's like, who cares? Well, I, yeah. Well, I don't get it though. I don't understand. I really don't. I don't understand the shame. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's more of a sensitive thing with women and weight and people I get, just yeah. don't want people to I know. So. For me, here you go. If there, all of a sudden you see me in two months and I'm like, Phew. Super skinny. That's why. Trizepatide. <laughs> is it trizepatide the same as zepatide? Is that the same thing? Oh, I don't know. Because well, again, I can always just reference the show because that's my <laughs> it's a, my only like uh, communication with pop culture because I do it daily. But they put out an ad, whether it's trizepatide or zepatide, it's one of those, and they took a shot at Ozempic. Oh, really? Because Ozempic is for di It's supposed to be for diabetics. And they took a shot saying Hollywood is snatching up all the Ozempic and they're doing it for like to try to fit into a bikini oh. like five or 10 pounds. And they're saying this is a product that's, this is Zepatide saying that, this is a product that's made for people with diabetes and there's only so much to go around. So they took a shot in their ad oh. at Ozempic. So it's two pharmaceutical companies. So whatever. I don't really know much about it. Yeah. But my friend uh, she does my injections. She is the one that referred me to this lady because they work together and, um, and she helped her brother lose 30 pounds and she's based out of Texas. Um, so I will start it. I'll let y'all know my journey. Cause I could care less. Cause I know people are going to be like, Oh my God, you got skinny all of a sudden, but that's, that's why, but I don't care if people know I'm giving myself shots. I did take semi-glutide a year ago. Um, I don't know if it, you know, I, ha I got thrush in my mouth from taking semi-glutide. I had like all the side effects. It, it didn't work well for me and I stopped and I gained the weight back so fast. And I feel like once I stopped, I felt like my belly got fatter. That's me being honest. I'm not saying that's going to happen to anybody. There's so many people I know that are on semi-glutide and haven't had one side effect. Um, but I don't know enough about it. She just told me this is like strictly for like weight loss. I don't know if it's a diabetic drug. Um, I just go by what she tells me and then I got to send in my blood work and she can give me more information. If people are interested, and I think it's cool that you're sharing your journey because you're just starting it. So yeah, you, you haven't I'll do before got it and yet. after photos. I'll put on Oh Lord, y'all will barf, but I'll put on um, a bathing suit. I'll have Jeff take Speaking me. Speaking of the stomach bug. I know. I'll take a photo of uh, before because I, I just want um, to be back the weight I was in 2020. And I go, I'm not trying to be 120 pounds. I go just because I do think, I do think when I think that Ozempic face is a real thing. Like I, you kind of get look hard a little bit and your face looks sunken in when you get too skinny and then you get no butt. I already have a butt, so um, I don't, I just want to be back to where I was, and I'm going to continue doing this step. I do like 10 to 15,000 steps, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then sometimes on the weekend, but um, yeah, so I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing, and this is just going to jump start it. This isn't, I'm not promoting anything. I'm not right, a doctor. Exactly. I'm not anything. Do your research. This is just what I feel like is best for me. And so that's what I'm doing. So don't think I'm trying to promote anything. I'm not. Again, then the doctor on the show that it's her Your name's Dr. Coley. Uh, yeah. I trust I Dr. Referencing. Coley but too. But she's helped us out through like COVID and, you know, we talk to her at least once a week on the show and uh, she said she'd be willing to come on. So if people are really interested oh, about, yeah. you know, the differences or what's what, and, you know, we really need a doctor's opinion if people write in and that's what they want we could have her on as a guest dr anytime. coley is so she went to where harvard with the mit and harvard yeah she's so smart i love talking to her and she's so so sweet and she just knows so much because i kept asking her about anxiety i want to talk about everything so with her. you know what we should have her on one day yeah. she'd love to come and talk about and it. she knows so much about the ozempic and all that yeah. stuff so that would actually be a good idea so as you start your journey i think that yeah be and then cool. i can uh because <laughs> poor thing i'm the one i'm like dr coley 
Leighton took these vitamins. <laughs> Or Dr. Coley, I feel like I'm dying right now. And she'll like get back to me. She's the best. But we are going to take a break. It's like knowing and a then, good mechanic. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's nice. Um, we'll take a break and then uh, come back. All right, guys. We're always talking about our goals on this show. And one of my goals this year was to work with this product because it's a product I use daily. It's called AG1. It has changed my life. I felt like as the years went on, I've always taken supplements for whatever ailment I had. And I'm up to 12 to 15 supplements a day. And now that I drink AG1, I eliminated all that from my life by just drinking this in the morning. And Jeff is the one that made me a fan of AG1. I didn't know what it was. And I would always hear Jeff and the neighborhood dads talking about AG1 and how much they liked it. And Jeff always bought it. And I just never used it. Yeah, I was a fan. You always were a fan. Yeah, you were always ordering it. Now, I started using it in January. January 1st, to be exact. I started using it. I cannot go without it. Vitamins always make me sick. I've shared that. I always get queasy. I can drink my AG1 on every morning. I make it before school. I have it how every mom has their coffee going to drop off. I have my AG1 in my hand and it does not. Um, it's on an empty stomach. It does not make me feel like nauseous. I always feel good. I always feel like I have a lot of energy. And I'm telling you, it makes a difference because when they send the packaging to you, you feel important. Oh, it's so the packaging <laughs> is legit. You get this nice little scooping spoon. <laughs> it's a metal scooping it's, spoon, yeah. which is amazing. Oh, little tip. Put your AG1 in your fridge. After what, you open it. Yeah, if you get the powder pack. But the what you get is up to you. I'm just super excited about this one. And it helps, especially now with the kids being sick, it helps support our immune health. And I love that as well. I can't say enough about this product. AG1 is the supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. All right, guys, so if you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash togethermas. That's drinkag1.com slash togethermas. Check it out. Welcome back. We this subject I wanted to talk about uh, because I my, actually my brother sent this to me, and it is about a dad in Oregon. He is accused of drugging girls at his twelve year old daughter sleepover. So his twelve year old daughter had a sleepover, drugged the girls to go to sleep. Yeah, you told me about it. And this. my brother sent it to me and was like, I would never let my kids spend the night at someone's house. And then we started in this whole conversation. I was like, oh, I would love to talk about this on the podcast because when I was in elementary school, my mom didn't even know the parents. If I was invited to a sleepover, my mom didn't even know the parents and would just be like, hi, and just drop me off and let me do sleepovers at girls' birthdays. It was just such a different time. Really? Yeah. Like me and my friends. I'm older than you, and I never went to a stranger's Like house. a girl in my class that my parents didn't know their parents. My mom would, and I got an invitation to the birthday party and it was a sleepover. Yeah, my mom would take me and drop me off at their house, not knowing the parents, but. Yeah, I guess you didn't know. Parents I, yeah. weren't thinking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up, it was kind of like small town suburban, super safe in North Carolina. So um, I don't know. My mom, it's just a different time. And I remember the sleepovers were always so fun. We always stayed up till two in the morning and the poor parents, we kept them up all night. We were playing like light as a feather, stiff as a board, bloody Mary, like things like that. All like fun. I remember. What's uh, light as a feather, stiff as a board? Where somebody lays on the ground and you all put your hands underneath them and you do light as a feather, stiff as a board, light as a feather, stiff as a board and you lift them up. It sounds like hocus pocus. Kind of weird. It's kind of like, um, Oh, was it like seancey? 
I don't know. Or was it just fun? Or did it- well, we did it as fun. I wasn't thinking of it like that now as Bloody I'm Bloody Mary is saying. Yeah, we would see. turn off the lights and go in a mirror and do Bloody Mary. and You did that? Yeah, me and my friends. No, aren't you supposed to? I know that one. Aren't you supposed to go in by yourself and do it? I probably didn't. I probably scared myself. But it was all... I remember what what's it what's that song Barbie girl in the Barbie world I was at one sleepover and that was when that song came out and we sang that all night and the poor mom was probably like shut up <laughs> and it's so different now like my kids now parents can get in the directory uh, like at the school and ask for play dates mm-hmm. and I get that it's um wait but, real quick going back to the guy in the story do you know what he drugged them with what do you mean he drugged them was it I like think a, it was something like a Xanax so not like a melatonin uh-uh oh no. so like hard yeah oh okay. you should not be given 12 year old girls that you shouldn't even be given a melatonin I know I know but without the parents consent. but there is a difference between melatonin oh, and hard for sure. you know, drugs Xanax or something you yeah know, to a 12 year old oh I don't I mean, what was this guy thinking? What were you thinking? That's okay. So now we kind of, I just want to get caught up with that. That's why no sleepovers. Yeah. Our kids. I, I'm, it's it's not happening. Like really, it's not. Right. I, I don't know if I'm a bad dad or a good dad because of that. Because there's too many weird things that go on. One, the drugging, you know, I, the list goes on. And I think everyone knows where I'm going with this. But it's just, I don't want people here accusing me of that. If something goes wrong, I don't want my kid there. And then something did happen. And then all of a sudden, as a father, I ruined this kid's childhood because, uh, you know, and then I'm going to have to go and kill this person. And I'm going to be in jail my whole life. You know, I don't want the, <laughs> there's, for there's me, a, there's a list of reasons. I don't want the responsibility of other people's kids that I don't know the parents. It's different when people, I know the kids and they come over here like our neighbor's kids. I'm cool with because I know my neighbors and, but I don't want other kids for here. sure. If something, God forbid they got hurt, something happened. I don't want to be responsible. Yeah. I don't want, um, it's like if they call me and they're like, Oh, you know, there's someone that has called multiple times wanting Lawson to go to their house and play. And I'm like, I don't know the parents. I don't know the siblings. I don't know anyone. And I'm not just going to drop Lawson off at someone's house just because Lawson says, "Oh, I'm friends with this kid in class." I might be a weirdo, but I'm no, just I, I get. I I'm just I'm, protective that way. I am too, and maybe we're too protective. And again, I don't mind my kids playing or people coming over in a neighborhood that I know. It's just I don't like dropping him off in a strange house uh, that he doesn't know, and that I don't really know the parents. I don't listen. There, there's weird things. I grew up in you know, blocks away from John Wayne Gacy, where he grew up, you know, and I'm Catholic. So I know what went on in that church. So I'm very uh, hypersensitive to, to that. And I don't want to put my kids in a situation like that. I'm not trying to be like overprotective, but it's just something that, you know, uh, you could stay out as lazy, you know, well, there's seven and five, you can stay <laughs> out as lazy you want, but I'll come and get you, you know, right. if you're, you know, when the time's right. Well, I normally suggest we can meet you at a park or we could meet you somewhere like a main event. Yeah. That way I could talk to the parents, get to know the parents and then Lawson and, and them then can maybe. still have fun. And, um, I actually just got a text recently about someone, uh, their son wanted to hang out with Lawson and it was cool. Like, the dad didn't suggest like go into anyone's house. He's just like meet out. And I was like, perfect. Like we'll meet out at the park, you know, and they can play. Yeah. Or- and then my friend made this up. I don't, or maybe it's a known thing. And I thought it was great. She calls it a sleep under. So when the kids ask if they can sleep, um, like, oh, we want to sleep over. We say, oh, we're going to have a sleep under. And that means I'm at, like they're in my neighborhood and we're at someone's house and we stay up past our bedtime but we come home. So meaning we're at their house. I'm pro- not, I haven't been drinking, but I'm saying before it's like me and the mom are having like glass of wine and maybe we come home at 1130 midnight 
and it's later because we can walk home and then instead of spending the night out. you could sleep in and your so, old bed. Yeah, yeah, and the kids feel like, oh, we're having a sleepover, we're staying up later and they're more excited and they're watching movies. Or in the summertime, we put them in their PJs and make them feel like it's a sleepover. Yeah. It's just a sleep under. That's great. And yeah. then you sleep in your own bed. Yeah. And like I said, if I know the kids, of course, you know, none, none of that applies. But it's just, I, I don't know. I just. I feel like our next door neighbors are this, they, we all parent the same and they are the same way. They're like no sleepovers. And so it makes it easier because it's not like they're. Well, especially we live next door. Yes. Yeah, send him home when he's yeah. getting sleepy or something. Yeah. And even like, so I work out, we have like a little workout Rocky Balboa style thing in our basement. And I have a sauna in there and I do it a lot. And the kids are always in and out after school playing and stuff. And I'm all, even like that, I'm like, man, I got to put my wet clothes back on after I get out of sauna. Yeah. Cause I don't even want like to go up there with my shirt off. Yeah. You know, cause nowadays things are so sensitive and I'm not saying our neighbors or anything like that, but things are like, Oh yeah. I was at the, the Schroeder's house and the dad was walking around in a towel, Yeah, you know, when I was just running upstairs to take a shower, it's like, things are just weird now. And uh, I don't want to take any chances. Yeah. Well, I tell the kids, I'm like, I sh like if Lawson has a bunch of kids, I always shut my door. I'm like, my room is off. Yeah. Place. You know, nobody should be in my room. But that's what, <laughs> that's my take. No sleepovers in our house. <laughs> Man, we really harped on that one. I know. I yeah. I'm just like Pat. But my brother, he's a, my brother has no kids. I had a million sleepovers when I was a kid. Yeah, it was my favorite. So did I. Yeah. And um, but when I as I got older, I remember being like, I didn't like going to sleepovers. I liked being in my bed when I got older. But when I was younger, I liked it. Like if it was, important. they were fun. I don't. I, yeah, I thought it was fun. You always like do dumb things. So, okay, we're going to take a break <laughs> and then uh, we'll come back. All right, welcome back. Speaking of parenting, do you want to get right into it? We're all about Talk parenting today? I guess. Well, you get into it because you took the kids to the book fair. They're actually playing okay, with their... Okay, so Lawson has his book fair. Well, it just ended. And then Layton's going to have a book fair. And I can't stand it at Layton School. They put the book fair right in the center when you walk in. So I have to walk by it. And then when I pick him up, walk back. And Layton wants every single thing. And I have to listen to him cry. I'm like, no, we're not getting anything. Like, I'll let him get something small. But he wants it for the five days it's there. He wants a new thing from when we walk in and when we walk out. And then I have to listen to him cry all the way when we go to Lawson school because he's like, I want a book. I want a toy. And I'm like, can you not put that book fair hidden? They do it on purpose. So oh. you walk by and you have to buy something. And then today, like I love Lawson school. The book fair's tucked away in the library and it's away. So you don't, you know, the kids don't see it. Oh. They just go through it. So today I called the school because Lawson had been out and I had promised him after school that we would go, but the book fair was done at 1.30. So the school, I got to go in and Lawson was in recess and then he met me and then we went through the book fair and I got Leighton something and Lawson something. But that's my rant for this week is hide your book fair. <laughs> did you, uh, did you have secret, not secret <clears throat> Santa, what, Santa's secret workshop? Is that what it's called? When you were a kid, Never but you were a it. kid. Okay. And like grammar school. And then you'd go through and you got to pick out like little things for your parents, like oh. erasers. And like, I think it was called Santa's secret shop or something. No. I kind of remember that. And you pick out like little things like you'd shop there, but it'd be like your present. Oh, to your parents. Yeah. And like your, but what's your parents going to like at the book fair? It's all for like, kids. no, this was all junk. I think, yeah. I don't know. I just, I just, for a second, I just remembered that I spent, I spent, Normally Santa's spend like a hundred dollars at the book fair. Sorry, Jeff, but <laughs> I know you're going to be like, how do you spend that? But by the way, when I was going, it, things were 10 cents. Like you get this and this and you know, Oh no, this is okay. So the teachers, you can choose to get the teachers pick out books for their class and you can choose to buy the teacher books. So, you know, I got to, 
So like I saw Lawson's kindergarten teacher who from last year and I love her and she has really helped me with like Layton and get that organized. So I bought her her last two books that were in her basket. And then Lawson's teacher, um, I text her. I was like, do you need any more books for your classroom? Because Lawson picked three books out today and it's because he reads them in his class and he goes, oh, mom, I love these books. And it just makes it reading easier during the week when I'm practicing practicing with him we're doing a podcast on book fair i know do you want to start yours no i will go off on a rant because i'm going to talk about the girl scouts i'm surprised you didn't say Give anything a hundred dollars at a book fair is ridiculous well i mean it just i don't want to even go down that because <laughs> i'll get all pissed off but uh one more thing about books <laughs> do you remember uh did you have this too it's called like book it or like when you read a book, you put like a star. And then if you get like five stars, you get like a free Pizza Hut pizza. No. You never, never had, had that? that? Uh-uh. It was like a book club thing when you were a kid. Mm-mm. Yeah, I don't think I read one book. And I was always like putting stickers on there and trying to get free pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> of course you were. Of course you were. I forget what it was called, but I do remember that too. I like when we talk about something that like jogs my memory of something else. And mm-hmm. I, I totally forgot about that. But I remember I totally lied i didn't read those books i just wanted a free pizza hut pizza oh you yeah that's typical you you haven't changed at all (laughs) i'm sure me and all my friends did the same thing nobody read that book uh but anyways let's get into the girl scouts and then we'll, we'll wrap it up here okay so the girl scouts i think are just wrapping up that was like a thing all over the neighborhood all over the neighborhood. Every corner, there's it's a Girl shameless. Scout. It's shameless now. <laughs> Emails. And I think everyone deals with this. I, I, I will get it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where to start because I'm you're so angry get about bashed. it. No, I'm not. Here's the deal. If you're going to sell me Girl Scout cookies, I, I'll give you $50. That's a lot, right? That's a lot of money. $50. But in return, I want a button or some kind of card or an app on my phone that says I purchased fifty dollars. Leave me alone. Right? Okay. This is a good idea. <laughs> so when people are like "Hi," and the girl's like "Hi," and my Jen, my baby, and you're like, "Oh, say, hey, sweetie, look at my app. I already bought it. Fifty bucks. You know, I got a gold star." And then you could just go on without feeling bad. Like I go into yoga class, and there's a woman out there selling. Uh, cookie i'm like dude i'm going into yoga to try to get rid of these cookies in my stomach not to buy more and then you got to support everybody people email me i got like 10 emails hey man sorry this is shameless want to purchase some girl scout cookies and then i could just send them my sticker or picture of my button that says hey buddy i already maxed out sorry maybe next year they're right i always feel bad because it's like right out of the grocery store and it's like but how many could you buy i I know that's what i'm saying it makes me feel bad because you're like, oh man, I bought this many. I can't buy any more. I always try, if I buy Girl Scout cookies, I always try to buy it from the neighbor kids to support them. I'm willing to up it to $100. $100 and I get some sort of button and and you leave me alone. No, I can 100. see you hiding. Jeff, when somebody's outside at Trader Joe's trying to sell something, Jeff, <laughs> I, uh, I'm like, why is he calling me? He'll call me. And he's like, oh, yeah, hey, what's going on? Uh, I'm talking. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, oh, just those uh, people trying to sell something outside Trader Joe's. I'll call you back when I'm out. And then hangs up. And that's what I you do. I do it all the time. That's his it's system. Because it's, it's, <laughs> it's very natural acting if I'm, you're actually on the phone. Sometimes you don't answer. And then I got to pretend. And I really go through the whole thing. I'm like, what do you mean you spent uh, $100 at the book fair? And then I just keep walking. I'm like, oh, next time. what are they doing i don't want to sign your petition i don't know what you're talking about it's the same as the uh, listen i'll buy a trader joe's button a hundred dollars and so now i got a girl scout button and a trader joe's button don't bother me i just show you the button no don't talk to me button i had someone two hundred dollars a year come up to me i was in cherry creek over by the shopping center and it was about I don't know. I think it was about like saving trees or something. And the guy's like, you look pretty nice. So let me tell you a little bit about this. And I got stuck and I was like, dang it. And then he's like, so do you want to pay? I think it was like $150. It's only $150 a month. And I mean, he was good. And I go, you're very sweet. Thank you for going through this whole spiel with me. And it makes you feel bad. Cause I'm like, dang, 
you went through this whole thing and I'm already saying no in my head. And it, I do, I, I just listen, smile, act like I'm interested. And then, uh, cause I mean, that takes guts. I'm at, I always put myself in that situation. What if that was me trying to sell that to somebody? I mean, there was this kid uh, walking down our street and he had coupons. He's like, oh, I play lacrosse. Do you want to buy my coupon book? I'm raising money for my lacrosse team. It's 30 bucks. I'm like, Jeff, we just got back from Great Wolf Lodge. I'm like, Jeff, get your wallet. <laughs> I didn't even, I, who knows? He could have lied to me and told me he didn't even play. Uh, he didn't even play lacrosse. Who knows? But I just felt bad because I'm like, this kid has the guts to come down and ask for, you know, it's it probably... They're probably scared. Of course they are. I had to do that for my little league football team. You sell like raffle tickets. Yeah, but it makes me feel good because I'm helping. I'm helping the kid out. Yeah, but now I'm, I know I do too. I feel bad because if I get in a conversation, I'm going to give them something. You know, if I start for talking sure. to the little girl, I got to buy a cookie. That's why I need a button. Yeah, you know? and it's the same. Like when you go to Costco, everyone's trying to sell you solar panels and stuff. Oh, here's a good one. You for almost Costco. got sold on solar panels. No, I was looking into it. Yeah. So now I kind of got info, and then I'm, and then if I really get in a conversation, because in Home Depot sometimes they'll like come up to you, they'll sidle you, and they'll be you like, know what? "Hey," and then you're like, "Whoa, dude!" The solar panels. This would be um a. Um, like a big deal breaker for me. If you were buying a house and the solar panels were not paid off, because we learned that if the solar panels are not paid off from the previous owners, you inherit that, you inherit that and you have to pay for that. Yeah. And so I, that would be a breaking point for but me. Here's a good one. So okay, every time no. I go to Costco, because they're pretty aggressive, not aggressive, they're pretty, you know, they're salesmen. I don't mind. I used to sell radio advertisement and I hated it. And I, so I, I get it where they're coming from. But Here's my jam now. <laughs> when I go to Costco and they're like, hey man, you interested in solar panels? I'm like, or solar panels? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm an apartment guy. I just say I'm an apartment guy. And then you compliment them. You're like, dude, those are sweet glasses, dude. And they're like, oh yeah, you like these? You're like, yeah, man, see ya. And then you just keep walking. You kind of throw them off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. It works. That's what you do. Solar panel salesman. You say you live in an apartment, compliment their shoes or their glasses or something they're wearing, and then just keep it moving. Later, bro. <laughs> well, the guy that was talking to me about the trees, I was like, listen, not $150. I go, I got $20 on me. Here you go. You can use that towards like saving the trees. And he's like, I can't take cash. I was like, go buy a coffee or something. And, you know, for going around asking people. Because how many people are Do you feel like, better about yourself when you give it? Yeah. Me too. It just makes me feel good. It's just like, listen, I did something. And at least they're, and they probably appreciate it too. It's like, wow, this person, I know they don't want to hear it, but I got to do it. But how about, oh yeah. I, I would know. be a horrible, horrible salesperson. Yeah, I was, I was terrible at that job. Well, but I feel bad. Me too, the worst. And they're like, don't just... Yeah, it was. It was I yeah, it. I, I like think about someone else. My mom says the same thing. Like at the bank, they always trying to push people to open up credit cards. And my mom, <laughs> she's about to retire. She's like she's almost done. And um, they're like, they've given up on her. She's like, I can't. It's she's in the bank in the small town. Everybody knows her. She's like, I'm not having this old lady try to open I up know. a credit card. She's like, no way. And she goes, I can't do it. And she goes, because I wouldn't want somebody doing that to me. Yeah. But there are some people that I don't even know how they are salespeople. Like they are just are so good at it. How about you ever go to a grocery store and it's, you want to round up for the kids? Yeah, I do sometimes. No, I'm done. It's officially no. I did. And now I'm like, what kids? Who's getting that? Somebody. Not kids. I don't, some charities, I'm really skeptical about charities now. I Me feel too. like charities are just for rich people. I think so you've got to find what you're passionate about or what you're interested in or what you want to give, what cause you want to give to and give to that. And then that way kind of makes you feel better about saying no to everything else. Yeah. Cause you, don't, I'm so, I don't, now I'm so confused cause I don't know what's a scam. You know, do you, are you really selling these raffle tickets? Cause you're, School needs new jerseys because now you're playing on my heartstrings. Are these really for kids? Who, who <laughs> my buddy Al, again, I referenced the show, has this whole bit about like, where is all the Girl Scout money going? Do you know how much 
they make at least a billion dollars a year. Jeez. At least. I don't know the number. But who's getting that money? Doesn't it pay for, like, trips? Have you ever seen Girl Scouts, like, hanging out in a luxury hotel? Like, what do you, where's the money going? Beats me. I have no idea. <laughs> right. I think we're done here. <laughs> yeah. I think we've stressed this out. but um, We could keep going. This is what we do in our real lives. <laughs> we're going to continue this conversation without you. I'm like, I paid $7 for a nice coffee? What? Oh. Uh, I know. Don't get them started. Okay. We... Taking a break? No, we're done. Are we done? All right. What do you mean? We're not? I don't know. I think we're done. I think, is there anything? Because if we keep going, I'm going to get fired up. Okay. And I don't need to be fired up. All right. We're 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 actually going out to dinner. Yeah, so. we're going out to dinner. And you know what? This is coming out Wednesday. And you know what? Sunday, this is Friday, is my favorite day. We get to kick the clocks a daylight saving time. Oh, I and can't And we get wait. an extra hour of light. And I love it. It's kind of like, should be a day to be celebrated. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, so Sunday, uh, we're going to have an extra day, extra hour of light. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. very important information. Yeah, it's amazing, Jeff. <laughs> All right. Well, what if C A T was really spelled dog? Okay. Do you know what that's from? No. Revenge of the Nerds. Too. Never seen it. You never saw Revenge of the Nerds? No. I don't know if it holds up. It definitely you probably get in trouble now for watching it, but <laughs> some funny stuff. Never seen it. All right. All right. We're done. Okay. Thank you all for continuing to follow, like, download, subscribe. Um, we, pre we just appreciate you sticking with us, even though we're so random all the time and with our random stories. Um, have a wonderful week, and we will see you all next week. Bye.